And so that's kind of where the, the, the um, big step was for me, but I've always been really wanting to understand how do people connect to content and also how do we get them so motivated that they're like me when I was in that movie theater. I couldn't stop talking about Star Wars. And I became a fan of Star Wars at, at that moment. And um, I literally watched it over a thousand, Empire Strikes Back a thousand times. Like it's just one of the most amazing films of all time, but it means something to me. Even watching it today, it just it brings something up. And so I'm like, what is that? And so I went on a quest to learn all that um, went way, way deep um, of how content can connect the hu humans and, and change the world. And how did the lessons that you learned from spending two plus decades in content creation apply to crafting this show? Because for me, and I think some people would agree with this, one of the remarkable things about The Chosen is how much it resonates with people of so many different faith backgrounds. So I'm curious, how did, how did you apply all the lessons and the learning in crafting the experience of The Chosen for that audience? Yeah, I spent um, most of my career since 2005 is when I discovered YouTube. And I found that I really didn't want to make Super Bowl commercials. I thought I did. I just wanted to make videos that people would want to watch and share. And YouTube gave me a platform to do that. And I then decided to be, I want to be the number one person on YouTube that, that understands marketing and builds audiences. And I've been able to work with the biggest brands in the world. Um, did a little video game called Fortnite, really helped out with that. Um, and I've been able to do great projects and, and take creators down a lane where they're influencing today's generation, and I just love it. Um, one of the reasons why I'm here is I'm a firm believer in education. I think if I only consume what others give me and I don't give back, then I'm not a good steward. And I, I believe in education. Um, and so uh, I started a conference called Vid Summit, where we teach these creators from all around the world how to make YouTube their business, how to make an entertainment company, not just uh, dance in front of the camera. We want you to dance in front of the camera and make money. You know, that's, that's what we're all about. And um, did that for a while. And um, every year we do case studies. Um, and show people the breakdown of how you do things. Like we want to get very specific on it. And I had a friend that uh, flew all the way there just to show me a short film that a creator made for his church. And I watched that short film, and it was only 19 minutes long, and I, and I realized two things. Number one, it was extremely low budget. I could see that within the first two frames of the, the short film. The second thing, it connected to me deeper than Star Wars did in Empire Strikes Back. I was watching a film about the birth of Jesus Christ, but yet I was really connecting with the shepherd. And I just, I got it. I got that this was amazing. And the thought came to me is like, man, I wonder if he's going to do something bigger. And I got introduced to him uh, two days later. And, um, <laughs> The first thing that came out of my mouth was, wow, you're tall, because he's actually really tall. And he goes, wow, you're big bone, because I'm actually big bone. I knew we were going to hit it off after that. Um, and the reason why was um, we don't take ourselves seriously. And we had some very in-depth conversations about content and, and um, you know, what he was looking to create this TV show about Jesus. And I felt like everything that I've done up to my... Uh, in my career up to that moment was leading to this specific project uh, to really help build uh, the chosen in ways that God knew I could. Um, and for us, it's all about the audience. It's about developing the audience. And I've been in audience development for a very long time. And I just felt, oh man, this is so great. So this is going to be a, a, an amazing project. Um, I want to tell you two things, since you're all students here um, with communications, this is something that I do um, very religiously, um, is when we start a project, whatever you're going to do, if it's big, you've got to think big. Um, and we 
we wanted this to truly impact the world. We just didn't want to make it just because we wanted to make it. We wanted to make content that would connect with people and impact others. And those individuals would bring others to our project. Now, here's the difference. We focused in on our audience. Uh, we spent two days, we locked ourselves in an Airbnb, and we decided what our brand stands for, what our brand is, what the content's going to be. Uh, Dallas does all the content with the two writers. I don't do any of the content uh, when it comes to the show itself, but the social strategy I do. Uh, but outside of that, we just wanted to, to really define our parameters, and that was really important. Uh, the second thing um, that we did was um, we, we just knew that if we could just communicate, communicate clearly our vision of what we wanted to create, that we could have other people help us um, you know, fund the project. And so we got really direct on what do we need to do and how, how we were going to uh, formulate it in a video. And it was really clear. You know, we wanted to create a TV show about Jesus, and Hollywood's never going to create a TV show about Jesus the way we would, because we're believers, and we want to do it in a way that would praise God. And and so that's that's how it all started, um, from that direction, and it gave us very extreme focus. We started with zero money in the bank account, because that's usually what happens when you do that. And then my, my sugar mom up there, raise your hand, Carolyn, that's my wife. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Messaging. We knew our target audience who we were going to connect with to raise the money. We knew our target audience that was going to connect with the show. And we went forward with faith and determination uh, to get it done. And that's what that's how it all started. Yeah, I think one of the most remarkable things about the series is that, and we talked about this in the hallway, is the team that you've assembled behind it is so, to me, evidence of providence. You have your marketing skills, you have the Harmon Brothers uh, distribution skills, and then you have the creator, Rosa Bennett. So it's, it's truly remarkable. One of the things that I wanted to get your take on is what makes The Chosen different? Because it resonates in a way that is different than the Passion of the Christ. It's different than a lot of other religious programming. What do you think makes The Chosen different? So I think for me is, um, believe it or not, The Chosen is not about Jesus Christ. Um, it's about the people that encountered Jesus Christ um, and those that he called. And I believe the difference between other projects, and there's some great projects that you just mentioned. Those are some amazing projects. Uh, we just want real life problems, because we all have problems, we all have issues. And these problems and issues that we face every day is what actually connects to the character. Uh, to see the, when Mary get redeemed, it meant something. Um, especially if you've ever felt redeemed or you felt the Holy Spirit penetrate you and you can feel that connection with God. You know, these moments that um, Jesus actually lived, he actually had friends, he actually had a mom who loved him so much. We wanted to share those moments. Um, and that's the moments that actually connects uh, with people. It's making it real, not putting it um, perfect, but putting it in a way that it shows reality the audience and how you get the show to the audience? Yeah, great question. Um, for us, uh, we realized really early there was a story in the Bible about Moses. And uh, Moses went and uh, was rescuing the children of Israel in Egypt. And um, there was miracles that happened there, and there was a lot of plagues. And, and before you know it, Moses and the, the children of Israel got to leave Egypt. And that's kind of how the chosen we felt. We had, we're, we're kind of walking away from Egypt, and uh, that was pretty comfortable over there. And you know, we're going to the unknown. Uh, but it was the moment where uh, God commands them to pitch the tents right next to the Red Sea, and um, then they get word that Egypt was pretty mad at them. It's going to come and destroy them. And we got to a place where uh, we needed a miracle. And that's what The Chosen has always been. And so we'll always do what we're told when we get to a point, uh, a point 
that doesn't make sense sometimes to us. Uh, but we needed to get to that area, and then God provides. And what's beautiful is after the Red Sea, um, they lived in the, um, the desert for a very long time. And they were on the manna program. That's when manna would fall from heaven. That's why the chosen was for four years. We, we call it the manna marketing program. Because <laughs> we only had enough to eat for that day, or only just the amount that we needed uh, for that moment. No, no more, no less. And if we, if we kind of kept it aside, um, then it would rot. Uh, but but what, what we found was um, God would take us to a point where he would just humble us enough that we need to be surrendered enough just to see what his path was. So let me give you the, this perfect example. Um, we had a distribution partner that did not want to do DVDs, but we're like, my mom can't even watch it. It's too co confusing. So we did DVDs. Um, we actually sold more DVDs in, U in, in the United States than any other company. <laughs> it's crazy. The Chosen's going great there. But we, we needed to do it, see, make it simple for them to watch. Um, and then two, it was still difficult to get people to adopt to watch it. Is it paid? Is it free? And we had this, this idea to give it free for seven days. We were going to live stream on YouTube, because I love YouTube. <laughs> and um, we're going to just give it away for free. And we had a way that people could unlock it or pay it forward for someone else at that time. And the best day that we've ever had, um, you know, we, we, we did all our efforts. We brought all our loaves and fishes. And, and uh, God would bless those. But the day that we made it free on, on YouTube, uh, we made four times more money than we've ever made. And then the next day, it was seven times more money than we ever made. And the next day after that, it was 20 times more money than we ever made. What was God telling us? Make it for free. <laughs> but he'll provide. He'll provide. And, and that's where it all started. So you, you asked a lot of great questions, and I, I would say, uh, every time that we needed something, we were on the MANA program, God provided. If we needed someone uh, in Brazil, God always provided someone in Brazil for us. That's somebody that felt prepared to help us. And so, is it our project? Like, you know, no, it's not. And uh, all we're trying to do is, is, is be, in a, be humble, be uh, open to receive, and be looking for what God really wants us to do with this project. And I think the most radical thing that we've ever did was uh, we, we sold the IP, the chosen, to a nonprofit just so that we can get it out faster. And what we did was they have, we have all the commercial rights, they have all the nonprofit rights, but they're giving it away. And right now, uh, there's a kind of, you misspoke of how many uh, languages it's translated as 600 in season one. And by the end of this year, we'll be in 50 uh, dubbed languages um, for both season one, season two, season three. And translated will be in over a thousand um, all, all, all seasons. So this will be awesome. Um, to predict what the viewer wants to watch. And the second thing, the only goal that it has outside of that is to keep them on YouTube longer. So if you understand who your audience is and you're giving them what they want uh, from the packaging down to a, a very specific product and you're consistent with that, YouTube will find your audience for you. You don't need to find your audience. Uh, so let me give you the perfect example of this. Like I, I went uh, and I've eaten in your fine city here um, a lot, probably more than I should. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a lot of different places that have different menus. But just imagine this: if I went, if I wanted a gelato, and I saw a sign that said gelato, and I'm like, ooh, that looks really good. I went and you know how you have your little menus out front. Ooh, and I saw that there was like the menu of gelato, and I like the chocolate because the chocolate's so good. And I go into the store, and it's not gelato. That's that's an issue. Um, I I would freak out. Okay. <laughs> I would leave. So the title and the thumbnail needs to be enticing to the person, but it needs to be relevant to the content. And then the content itself needs to speak consistently to the audience. So you can't go off on 
tangents, you have to be specific, hey, my audience would love these types of content, and, and, and see, you know, um, if they skip a video, YouTube's looking at what they skip too, so if they're skipping every three videos that you upload or every other video you upload, uh, you don't have a really good content strategy, okay? Christian traditions and denominations, and how does that affect how it was received and is received? <laughs> Um, I love that question. So we did uh, a couple things before we got uh, uh, into production. So Dallas and the writers wrote uh, the scripts for season one. And we, I've never been to the Holy Land. And Dallas has never been to the Holy Land. And we thought, hey, why don't we go do some research over there, but also shoot a video. So we're, we, we're raising money. Um, and uh, we basically had uh, a couple evangelicals couple Mormons and a Jew went to, to Jerusalem. And it was a beautiful thing, because we went uh, where the Sermon on the Mount, um, where they think that was at, and we read the Sermon on the Mount, it's beautiful. And we went out to the Sea of Galilee. And um, this is kind of a, a personal moment for me, but it's very relevant to your question. Um, right then and there, I turned to our guide, who was a rabbi, and I says, how long have you been coming to Jerusalem? He said, 20 years. And I says, how many times a year do you come? He goes, between you know, 12 or 18 times a year. I'm like, why don't you just live here? He goes, I wish I could. <laughs> um, and I said, I, I noticed that there's a first century boat out there. Have you ever seen that? And he goes, actually, no. And right then and there, I kid you not, the person in that boat throws out a first century net. And the rabbi stopped me, he goes, do you know what this means? And he, I go, no, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. He goes, no, it's the parable of the, of the nets and the fishes. And then he quoted it. And we were in tears. He said, and then he prophesied. He says, the chosen is going to be the net that God will use as a tool to gather people to him. And I felt it. I felt it. And so it's our responsibility to make amazing content, and God will use it the way that he wants to. Use, if he wants to use it as a net, he's going to use it as a net. But I believe right now it's being used as a net, and it's able to bring people together. God will sort it all out later. But if you really look at it, part of those two days that we locked ourselves in the Airbnb, we wanted to be inclusive, not exclusive. We wanted to welcome everyone, because everyone needs Jesus. And that's, that's what we believed. And having that moment just brought a lot of clarity uh, for me as a marketing person and building the audience that I just need to be uh, cautious in certain ways, uh, but we've got to be true in, in others. Great. Um, so I, I do love, um, I do love the, the, the questions on that one. For us, um, People are really important. Um, believe it or not, we take a lot of effort to reply to comments on Facebook and on YouTube and on Instagram. We get a lot of people writing letters. We take a lot of time and effort in replying to the one person that wants to connect with us. And with The Chosen, we want to create a personal experience because we believe that's what Jesus did. Um, he went one-on-one. -on -one. And so when someone volunteers or wants to be an extra, we need lots of extras. Um, especially, we don't want them to look like me, you know. <laughs> we want them a, a lot, a lot uh, darker than my white skin, because I come from the Irish blood, I'm telling you. <laughs> Got two colors, white and red. I can play a Roman, I can play a Roman there. <laughs> but uh, but we, want, we want to make sure that they have a beautiful experience and it's not easy work being an extra but we we want to give them that that moment because when it's portrayed on, on on film and this is why I love the chosen is it gives you to think oh there's a lot much more that was going on in the world when that verse was recorded you know and I love to go think deeper of oh wait Women weren't treated very nicely in first century, uh, let alone Samaritan women weren't treated nicely. Even Samaritan women who was caught in adultery wasn't very treated nicely. 
And yet that's the person that Jesus Christ went to to declare his divinity. And so it's just beautiful to even consider what was the world like, and that's what we get to explore in The Chosen. It's a group, knowing that you have a lot of religious, religious groups. And the second one is um, some of the characters came to my lady when I and I had the opportunity to go and see her in one of the first episodes. That's great. Um, sorry. <laughs> and I was wondering, how has the experience been working with most of the characters not living, like not being, um, not practicing their religion? Yeah. yeah, great, great, great question. So um, one of the first things that my partner Dallas Jenkins wanted to do for The Chosen um, was be true to him. Uh, so all the scripts are approved by him. Every character is approved by him. The direction is approved by him. Uh, are we cautious? Yes, we are. We're, we're cautious. Uh, he's a Baptist. Um, he will take it from his, like he even got a, a, his degree um, uh, in Bible studies and from Chicago area. And, um, and ultimately, that's the direction we're leading, uh, you know, doing the show is under what he truly does believe. Uh, but the reality is this, is there might be some things that the, theology-wise that I might be disagree with Dallas, or you might disagree with Dallas, but this is about Jesus, his Gospels. It's about how he was connecting to um, and starting his ministry in those, those three and a half years of him um, teaching the most valuable things that we could ever, ever learn. And so that's where we focus the most attention on. And then two, more the journey of the transformation. And I, I do want to say this specifically. Uh, Jesus invited all to come unto him. And he didn't care if they were believers or not. Uh, the chosen were the same way and with our cast. But there are cast members right now um, that have had a, a, an awakening uh, when it comes to this. Uh, Dallas received a text not too long ago from a, a key cast member that went to church for the first time ever, <laughs> ever. And why was that is because he had a friend in Dallas and he was being stirred by the content. And so we don't know what's going to happen, uh, but all we're going to try to do is do our best. Uh, but I want to I want to close on this with this question because it's really important. Uh, when we went to Jerusalem, uh, we we actually had a, a moment to go to Magdala, and they just unearthed the first century synagogue. It was so beautiful, and they had just on on the ground and everything. They're just kind of unearthing it, and um, I just was overcome by by um, the moment of this is, could have been where Jesus went. This is a synagogue in his time, and he could have taught here. And I just thought, I was thinking of the scripts, and <laughs> he said this a little bit later uh, at a different time, but he mentioned that God kind of spoke to him and says, these are the people that I loved. They were my friends. You know, I'm not going to let you mess it up. <laughs> and so um, we're, we take a lot of effort and time and energy, um, especially the writers, to make sure that we get it right.